Chapter 38. Tobias's Case. On my third day at work, Tobias delighted me with a pleasant surprise. After work, and in the evening, when others were beginning the night shift, he took me to his home, where beautiful moments of joy and learning awaited me. As soon as we entered, he introduced me to two kindly women, one elderly and the other approaching middle age. He explained that the latter was Luciana, his sister, and that the former was Hilda, his wife. Both were very affable and polite. We gathered in Tobias's admirable library, where we began examining marvelous volumes, both in terms of their bindings and their spiritual content. Hilda invited me to visit the garden so that I could observe up close some gracefully formed floral arrangements. Every home in Nasalar seemed to specialize in raising certain kinds of flowers. At Lysias's house, there were hundreds of gloxinias and lilies, whereas at Tobias's, countless hydrangeas bloomed in green sheets smattered with violet. The beautiful bowers of delicate trees resembling tender bamboo were laced together with an interesting vine that joined all the trees together at the top like huge floral cords forming a graceful roof overhead. I didn't know how to translate my admiration into words. An inebriating fragrance filled the air. We were talking about the beauty of the overall landscape as seen from that angle of the Ministry of Regeneration when Luciana called us back inside for a light meal. Enchanted with the simple atmosphere which seemed filled with sincere fraternity, I didn't know how to thank my generous host. At a certain point in our friendly conversation, Tobias smiled and said, I don't have to tell you that Andre here is still a newcomer to our ministry, and perhaps doesn't know my family story yet. The two women smiled, and noticing my inquiring look, he continued, Moreover, there are many families in the same situation as ours. Well, I was married twice, and nodding toward both women, he proceeded in a gesture of good humor. I believe I should tell you about my two wives. What do you think? Oh, well, yes, I murmured, extremely confused. You mean that both Hilda and Luciana shared your earth experience? That's right, he answered calmly. Hilda cut in and said, Please excuse our Tobias, Brother Andre. He is always eager to talk about the past whenever we meet with someone newly arrived from earth. Shouldn't it be a cause for joy, added Tobias with good humor? to have defeated the monster of jealousy, and to have gained at least a small degree of true fraternity. In fact, I objected, the problem deeply concerns all of us. After all, there are millions of people down on the planet who have married more than once. How can we resolve such an important problem in the light of eternal spirituality? We know that the death of the body only transforms. It doesn't destroy and the ties of the soul are carried throughout eternity. So what should we do? Condemn the man or woman who has married more than once? We would find millions of individuals in that situation. Many times I have wondered about that gospel passage in which the Master, referring to marriage in eternity, promises us the life of angels. The host kindly interrupted. Well, with all due respect to our Lord, we have to realize that we aren't yet in the sphere of angels, but in that of discarnate human beings. Then how can we solve the problem, I asked. Tobias smiled and remarked, very simply, we all know that between the non-thinking being and the human being, there is a huge gradated series of stages. Likewise, in our case, the path to angelhood represents an immense distance to travel. Well, how can we aspire to the company of angelic beings if we aren't yet fraternal with one another? Of course, there are strong-hearted travelers who, in a supreme effort of the will, show themselves to be superior to every obstacle along the way. However, the majority can't do without bridges or the help of charitable guardians. In light of such a truth, cases of this nature are solved based on the principles of real fraternity, where we must bear in mind that true marriage is between souls and is thus a union that no one can break. 
Luciana had kept still until that moment, but then interrupted. But it's important to remember that we owe all this happiness and understanding to the spirit of love and self-denial of our Hilda. Tobias's wife displayed dignified humility. Oh, hush. I don't possess those qualities. I'll try to summarize our story so that our guest might understand how painful my learning process was. With the gesture of a lovable storyteller, she continued, Tobias and I were married on earth while still very young, in obedience to sacred spiritual affinities. I don't think I need to describe the happiness of two souls who join together in matrimony and truly love each other. But death seemed jealous of our happiness and snatched me from the world when our second child was born. Our grief was indescribable. Tobias wept hopelessly, and I felt incapable of subduing my own anguish. Dreadful days in the umbral befell me. I could see no other way to handle the situation except to continue clinging to my husband and two little children, deaf to all explanations sent to me by my spirit friends via intuition. I wanted to fight like a hen beside her chicks. But I realized that Tobias had to reorganize the home and that the kids were in need of motherly assistance. The situation became frankly unbearable. My single sister-in-law couldn't stand the children, and the cook only feigned dedication to them. In addition, there were two young nannies who were completely unreliable. Thus, Tobias couldn't put off the reasonable solution to all this, and within one year after my death, he married Luciana against my will. Ah, if you knew how displeased I was. I was like a wounded wolf. In my ignorance, I even fought with the poor woman and tried to kill her. It was then that Jesus granted me the providential visit of my maternal grandmother, who had disincarnated many years before. She arrived somewhat casually really surprising me, sat down and held me on her lap, just as she used to do in the past, and asked tearfully, What's going on, my grandchild? What is your role in life? Are you a lioness or a soul conscious of God? Our sister Luciana is serving as a mother to your children. She keeps your house clean, works in your garden, and helps your husband in moments of stress. And yet, you don't think she deserves to be his new companion in the struggles of life. Is this the way your heart gives thanks for divine benefits and the way you reward those who serve you? Do you want Luciana to be a slave but despise her as a sister? Hilda, Hilda, have you forgotten your religious lessons of the crucified? Oh, my poor grandchild, my poor girl. Then I tearfully embraced my holy old godmother, abandoned my old home, and came with her to work in Nasalar. From that time on, Luciana became another daughter to me. I worked very hard. I devoted myself to serious study to the mortal improvement of my inner self and tried to help everyone, without exception, in my former home on earth. Tobias raised another family, which also became mine through sacred spiritual ties. Afterwards, he returned in the company of Luciana to join me, and she shares in our complete joy. And that, my friend, is our story. Luciana, however, interrupted. She didn't tell you how much she has sacrificed in teaching me by her example. What do you mean, my daughter? asked Hilda, grasping Luciana's right hand. Luciana smiled and continued. Thanks to Jesus and to her, I learned that there are marriages of love of fraternity, of trial, and of duty. On the day Hilda embraced and forgave me, I felt that my heart had been freed from the monster of base jealousy. Spiritual matrimony unites soul with soul, while the other kinds of marriage are mere consolations needed for solving problems or for the process of expiation, although all marriages are sacred. So we organized our new home based on genuine fraternity, added Tobias. Availing myself of a temporary silence, I asked, How are marriages accomplished here? Through a vibratory combination, Tobias explained attentively. Or, to be more explicit, by utter and complete affinity. 
Unable to control my curiosity, I forgot to mind my manners and asked, Then what is the position of our Luciana in this case? Before the spirit couple could answer, Luciana explained, When I married Tobias, a widower, I should have known our union would most probably be, above all, fraternal. However, it took me a while to understand that. In fact, it's logical to conclude that when a couple suffers from restlessness, incomprehension, and sadness, it indicates that they are married only physically and not spiritually. I wanted to ask another question, but couldn't without seeming indiscreet. However, Hilda read my thoughts and explained, Don't worry, Luciana is already betrothed spiritually. Her noble companion of many lifetimes preceded her in returning to the physical plane a few years ago. She'll follow him next year. I think the blissful meeting will take place in Sao Paulo. We all smiled happily. At that moment, Tobias was hurriedly called to the chamber's rectification to attend to a serious case, and we had to end our conversation.